You know the story. NASA wrote an article. We believe we thoroughly obliterated it. Now, the NASA Climate website team has responded. This video will be a thorough deconstruction of that official NASA response. This video will have three parts. We will briefly go over the basics of their original article and our response video. We will then review their response in depth, making our responses along the way. Finally, the video will cover what NASA ignored from our initial response. On August 3rd, NASA posted an article seemingly aimed directly at our community. It not only took shots at the notion that Earth's magnetic field changes are contributing to climate change, but they took shots at solar climate forcing in general. Our response pointed out their numerous mistakes, showed numerous papers contradicting their position that the sun and geomagnetic field are unimportant to climate change, and in the grade school exercise of identifying the themes of our response, there were two. First, the numerous geomagnetic excursions in recent record are tied to significant climate events. NASA's article focused on Le Champ only, called it the most recent event, and we had corrected with the list of recent events and comments on major climate events coinciding. The second point of our video was not at all related to the NASA article or to climate change. It was an expounding on the risk of a magnetic excursion, the biological coupling, the radiation, the navigational disruption. These two themes are important moving forward in this video. Now let's get to NASA's letter and what their team came up with. After touting their own glory for an entire paragraph, we come to a key thing to remember on their side, going into the letter. They claim to represent the current state of the science. The article was allegedly reviewed vigorously for months by the experts from relevant fields and the director of the Earth Science Division at NASA. NASA's next paragraph is the grade school exercise of theme identification and they said my main point was that the Lachamp event was a major cosmic ray event, and that caused major climate change. They claim this is false, and while we will show in this video why it is indeed a real part of the equation, more importantly, this is absolutely not the focus of our video response or our letter. It was not just about the Lachamp event, and the geomagnetic shift is much more than just cosmic rays and climate change. But you know me. Let's play devil's advocate and let NASA have their way first. Stick to Le Champ and cosmic rays and climate, as you wish. I knew immediately what was coming when I saw the hyperfocus on condensation nuclei creation in their first substantive paragraph. It is only one piece of the cosmic ray cloud picture. But let's go ahead and see what they cite as their source for no climate effect from cosmic rays. Current state of the science indeed. 2009. Indeed, it is focused on that particle creation, just part of the story, and oof, observations trump simulations every time. You could think cloud uncertainty is bad now, but that was 2009. It was about twice as bad back then. Then they attack with a comparison of high cosmic rays of late, and the low global tropospheric cloudiness seemingly in opposition to a correlation. Not only does this line of thinking ignore the well-known lag in these correlations, but the cloud reactions are not equal across the globe, nor are they confined to the lower troposphere. Also, 2012 is not the state of the science, and the conclusions herein have been well challenged in the peer-reviewed literature since. I had a little laugh at the next one. The cosmic ray cloud experiment does not simulate the atmosphere very well. It uses old assumptions and contains the same biases. Much of it is based on incorrect assumptions and inputs and, again, simulations. And again, 2013 is also not the current state of the science. And the paper they cited is actually about debunking the idea that cosmic rays warm the Earth. That was around about a decade ago. It's the opposite of what we say, and the paper indicates indeed what we do say. Cosmic rays would cool. Then you can tell they felt confident for some reason and ran off a ton of words on nuclei and aerosols from a paper from 2017, getting closer to the current state of the science but still merely focused on new particle creation, and they also found a one-man army publishing in 2017, again on the condensation nuclei, and again using the cloud experiment. Yes, a couple older papers doubt the connection. But we stand by the larger volume of evidence cited in our book that not only in fact dwarfs their cherry-picked selection of doubting articles, but which grasps the full range of mechanistic action of the cosmic rays, including the increased attraction of dust and water vapor. Yes, 
Cosmic rays create condensation nuclei, and that has some effect on the clouds. But more so, they affect the dust, the water, the global electric circuit, atmospheric electricity, and are also known to affect lightning. So yes, as a larger number of papers have shown, as the more recent papers have shown, including those too recent to have been cited in our book, the current state of the science is at best for NASA disputed, but really leaning heavily towards the affirmative. Then NASA takes a step back and falsely interprets a paper to suggest there was no major global climate shift during the Lachamp event, even though in parentheses, they identify that the extreme climate swings we discussed are exactly what was shown in the study. Now picture it's 100 degrees warmer in one part of the world and 100 degrees colder in another, killing literally everything in both locations. Technically, they offset one another, and according to these guys at NASA, they say there would be no major climate shift. That's literally what they did right there. And folks, you won't believe what they are quoting. That citation they think says there was no major Lachamp climate event is the paper about the terrible environmental crisis that came with the Lachamp event, which specifically mentions climate changes. NASA's next move is to make it seem like the cosmic rays were oh so big and the climate changes were oh so small in a bit of insolence by NASA here. The climate ignored it. Well, the link they give is an excellent use of isotope dating, but it does not discuss climate change. But if you do use the dating of that paper, then you run Lachamp right up to Heinrich event number four, a major climate event on this planet. Why did they pick this paper? Then this paragraph is a total sham. They demonstrated nothing of which they claim to be true in the paragraph. They focus on cosmic rays only, still. The Lachamp event only, still, and falsely claim it was not an environmental crisis. Then, as if NASA realized their blunder with using that paper to say the magnetic excursion was not a climate crisis, they took that paper they had just cited and went on the attack, which is completely crazy, but at least it's the position I expected NASA to take in the first place. They say the paper is not supported by the evidence used, which, by the way, did show a major shift in temperatures that apparently didn't count, because it was climate extremes in both directions, canceling the hot and the cold. Then they jump on the Vusen bandwagon, with much stronger language than was used in Vusen's paper, and in a way that puts the utmost importance on this one analysis above the rest. Well, here's a different analysis, and it starts with the isotope fiasco. When they say you need to give about a thousand years of leeway for error every 10,000 years back in time, it's actually being pretty generous, considering that sometimes the discrepancy can be orders of magnitude, as was the case here. We corrected NASA once already for their focus on Lachamp only, and their thinking it was the last major event. And even though we mentioned the climate and Heinrich events last time, NASA seemed to ignore it. So here, we'll show the climate events next to the excursion name. Gothenburg, Younger Dryas climate event, and what they refer to as H0, 12 to 13,000 years ago. The H1 Heinrich event was during the Helena Pauli magnetic event, and Lake Mungo was the axis of the last glacial maximum, and H2. H4 is pretty well tied to the Mono Lake excursion, and depending on the dating method you use for Lachamp, it reaches either an earlier or later Heinrich event. Then, after focusing on only Lachamp and cosmic rays for no good reason, they begin to address the second main point of our original response video, but only sort of. They address the overall biosphere risk of the magnetic change, pointing to Timmerman, which didn't say climate change didn't occur. They said it wasn't the major cause of the extinction, and of course, we didn't say that either. We said it was the symphony of challenges working together to bring these major events in the biosphere. That was the whole point of our letter. How focusing on too narrow a range is the worst mistake of all. For example, like focusing on Lachamp and cosmic rays, like NASA did in the first half of their response. Then, NASA managed to find a handful of papers from the last few decades that didn't find major climate changes with the Lachamp event. They are still stuck on that one. And in addition to the fact that some of those studies were not looking for climate change, there are thousands of studies on the Lachamp event alone. The majority do suggest a major climate shift, and hundreds specifically identify the Lachamp event in climate-dependent data, like sedimentation rates. This one is overwhelmingly against NASA's position in their tiny handful of articles. NASA then attacks the two papers I point to as the best recent displays of the biosphere risk of magnetic excursion. Both of them were about UV radiation damage. 
which is why one of them says that abrupt climate change was not the primary cause of the extinctions. Again, we aren't blaming climate change, but all of the factors combined. NASA then tried to go after Chanel and Vigliotti, saying they found a chance correlation, made no claims of causality, and didn't blame the climate. This is the paper. This is the number one geophysics journal on Earth. Chanel is the number one guy in this field and has been for decades. They certainly did not make a chance finding. They did make claims of causality, including about the Gothenburg event, the very last excursion, and again, they focused on UV radiation as part of a larger ensemble of forcing. I don't know if NASA didn't watch my video carefully, didn't understand my letter, or didn't feel like staying on point, but they didn't. And then, get this, they list off all the sources I used in the letter, the part about risks to the biosphere other than climate change, and tried to say they were worthless in this context because they didn't discuss the Lachamp excursion or climate changes. Literally, these are the papers from my letter, not my response to their climate science. The letter was about excursions, not just Lachamp, and it was our citing the other challenges to the biosphere, ergo, not the climate ones. So what is this? The NASA Climate Website team experts couldn't figure out those papers had nothing to do with my argument about climate change and magnetic excursions. Up top, they continue their obsession with Lachamp and climate change on articles not meant to describe climate changes, but the other biosphere challenges. They also insulted this article in Live Science, saying it is not a peer-reviewed article. Well, first, neither are a number of NASA's judgments about the actual peer-reviewed literature in their response letter, and second, the article comes from an interview with Rune Flobergagen, who was the head of the ESA swarm mission at the time, the one monitoring Earth's magnetic field. And just in case you still aren't questioning these folks at NASA, they saved the best for last. Not only did they hold on to their Lachamp obsession till the end, not only did they insist on mentioning climate change on articles that were in the other biosphere challenges section of our video, but they read that paper as a study of changes near the South Atlantic anomaly. I hope you can still read that through the oval I drew. Of course, that was the paper highlighting changes in the Pacific sector, recorded in Hawaii, not near the South Atlantic anomaly. This is lazy, unacceptable work by NASA. So folks, that was their entire response. That was me playing devil's advocate and letting them call the game in every way they wanted. And it was a slaughter but no more devil's advocate. I let them have the advantage, all video so far. Now it's time to play reality, and that means it's my turn. Here's what NASA didn't address in their response to me, starting with the fact that even under a carbon-dominated paradigm, the Earth's magnetic field is changing the atmospheric mixing ratios, not only offering a dual heating forcing mechanism outside of their obsession with cosmic rays, but one that disproportionately affects the polar cusp region, which is an excellent explanation for the climate changes at the Arctic. The ozone loss there is a direct expectation of the weaker geomagnetic field. And when this accounts for half the Arctic warming, which is one third of all global warming, this is a major issue I raised that NASA ignored. But so did the most recent IPCC report, so at least they are in good company. Perhaps my harshest swipe at NASA's article, in my initial response, was at their out of place, uncalled for, and scientifically ridiculous claim that the sun doesn't affect anything below the ionosphere no impact below, blatantly ignoring hundreds of studies on that very forcing, including literally every paper involving the global electric circuit. These have forcing periods from years of lag to near instantaneous effect. The mechanisms that take longer through the Hadley cells and jet forcing are also well described. I selected the best 500 papers in this realm out of more than 2,000, and it took 300 pages to construct the paradigm, which NASA refused to address in their response. All of this was more thoroughly broken out in our video response and a full playlist we have on climate forcing, but NASA was obsessed with cosmic rays in their letter, not a word about the solar forcing. I expected them not to dress their air isn't ferrous comment, and they ignored my comments there too. What an embarrassing route to claim that electromagnetism doesn't affect the atmosphere. Forgetting the global electric circuit and everything else in the peer-reviewed literature, oxygen, dust, and water vapor are all highly reactive to charge, electric fields, electric currents, and or magnetism. I can understand why they ignored that too. 
Then, apart from insulting this author and the former head of Swarm, and apart from botching the side of the planet where the 2017 field loss acceleration occurred, NASA ignored the evidence that the field is much further down the line than they portrayed in their article. Again, I understand why they didn't respond to that one either. As for my letter, this was part of the other half of my video, about challenges to the biosphere outside of the climate. I'd say they pretty well ignored the point of my letter and the circumstances under which it was included in my initial response. They just said, oh, these aren't about Lachamp and climate. It's not relevant. Speaking of NASA's current state of the science, perhaps they should read up on the current state of the science, just as long as they pay better attention than they did to my video and my letter. My two main points, the themes of my response, were utterly botched. In addition to making a mess of the Lachamp event itself, by focusing only on Lachamp, they exclude the volume of evidence that all the excursions tend to bring climate changes, and by focusing on cosmic rays, they ignore the solar forcing aspect, the global electric circuit, and other complicated interactions of the atmosphere. By trying to play climate obsession with my letter about not being obsessed with climate, it's literally one of the points of the letter, which I'm starting to think they didn't really read, they in fact ignored the most paramount science point to be made. Nobody should be downplaying magnetic excursions, especially because we're in one. This letter appears to have been too much for NASA, and God knows what went through their heads while they were watching my video. They were probably texting. So I've decided to simplify it. Here it is, NASA, with lots of pretty colors coming so you can stay focused. The important thing here is the loss of species. We see it with a lot of the excursions, and it makes sense. They bring a tremendous variety of challenges to the biosphere. Those challenges can be adequately listed in this fashion, and we can now break these out into lists that help us understand the bigger picture. The papers and basic physics tell us that the climate extremes will amplify in both directions. The storms will intensify due to extra cosmic rays, something I also noticed NASA didn't address, and this propagates more extreme versions of the worst of weather and climate. From a radiation standpoint, this is where we have not only a primary risk to species from UV light and cosmic rays, but risks to photosynthesis with UVB excess, and even some literature on the effects on ocean microbiota. Think the geomagnetic navigation isn't a biosphere challenge in an excursion? It's not just birds, but many other creatures are also known to use the field in some form of their life process. That is an understatement when it comes to the known health risks from biological coupling. Bacteria to plankton to seed integrity. Lots of literature one can sift through, but more importantly for the large creatures. It's not just direct hits with particles and UV, but the magnetic field and geoelectric dynamics couple with the body at macro and micro scales. What all these boil down to is a change in the climate during a change in the food chain. And in general, neither of those changes are good. Sadly, as if all those aren't bad enough, we now have a society dependent on electricity. We are one good solar flare away from being tossed back centuries, and that is true before you consider Earth's weakening magnetic field protection during a magnetic excursion. So if that two and a half page letter I wrote is too confusing, try the reading rainbow of magnetic excursion biosphere risk. As a reminder, I'm 100% against pollution, but 100% for good geophysics as well. And NASA, you're not going to get away with the sort of bad faith, unfocused, cherry-picked arguments we're accustomed to from immature social media cancel culture. You want to say anything else on this, don't email people behind my back. Don't write some article referring to some people and their ideas. Don't be the lowest of cowards. You can come right to me. As for the rest of you, wow, thank you for sitting through that. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.